Hello. Hey, Graham. It's Richie here. Man, I've got a couple days in between the tournaments until we officially open here at the lodge. The Marlin bite has been epic. So you need to get someone who knows what they're doing on a boat. You need to get down here. You need to catch some Marlin and drink some rub. It's going to be fun, buddy. Let me know. Get this, we've been invited for a few days of fishing before the legendary Tropic Star Lodge officially opens for the season. A week with the place all to ourselves. But we have to leave now, like now. Somebody tell my wife and kids, I'm on my way to fishing Mecca. Passenger jet, to prop plane, to airstrip in the middle of the Darien jungle, to Panga, to resort. Located on Panama's Pacific coast, Tropic Star Lodge opened its doors to anglers in 1963. A thin strip of rainforest fronting one of the most bountiful fisheries on Earth. But first, you have to survive the travel. Too low terrain. Too low terrain. Too low. Landing on a handmade dirt path in the middle of the jungle, surrounded by mountains and water, can be a bit spooky. While a bevy of species are found here, Pacific jacks, dolphin, roosterfish, we could keep going on. Its reputation is built on billfish, specifically the mighty marlin. Finding them is a thrill that's never lost on Tropic Star's fishing director, Richard White. It doesn't matter if you've caught one or a thousand marlin. Every one of them is different, and it doesn't matter how many you've ever seen in your life. As soon as that marlin hits, all theory, everything goes out the window, and it is absolute adrenaline boost like nothing else in the world. I've caught a lot of different fish, but the marlin, when you see that blue marlin just greyhounding away from you on top of the water, and your line's going out the port side, and all of a sudden you see it coming past you on the starboard side, and the boat's twisting and turning and people are trying to clear lines. It's just, there's nothing else like it on the planet. There is no other fish that does that. Richard said to bring someone that knows what they're doing. That guy is Andrew Cox, editor-in-chief of Marlin, which has been the magazine for the bill fishing community for 35 years. Along with helping us boost our numbers, Andrew is writing a cover story about Tropic Star that will be published later this year. On the tarmac, we run into world-renowned artist, angler, and marine biologist Guy Harvey. He's on his way home from his exclusive namesake fishing tournament held here annually during the off-season. What made the difference were a lot of sailfish around, and there are a few blue marlin around. Where you typically depend on trash lines to provide the action, we, yesterday we found a school of bonito. They stayed in one spot the whole time and we didn't move outside of a square mile of ocean. Right now the water's a bit dirty inshore because of all the very heavy rain. But offshore, there's a good strong current, about a knot and a half, and where you get a trash line with all the debris, you're going to get a lot of bait, a lot of sailfish and some blue marlin. Trash lines are the key because if they're 20, 30 miles long, you can fish all day along the trash line. This is Harvey's 60th trip to Tropic Star Lodge, and there's good reason for it. The professionalism of the captains, the mates, their history, they know the water so well, they're always gonna put you onto fish, inshore or offshore. 60 trips, that's a lot of history. Here comes the charge, ramming that big bill right into the boat, wham! 
This Marlin is really mad and no joke for the crew. A charging Marlin's liable to do anything. The tackle, the hairstyles, the hammy voice in this promotional film may be outdated, but its core message about Penis Bay is ageless. It's a fishing paradise. Acres of fish blasting the surface over this small submerged mountaintop they call the reef. This little harbor called Penis Bay is what those tall stories have said it was, a Panama paradise so near and yet so wonderfully far away from it all. Three days on the water to make it happen. Just us. And it's not just time we're battling. As it turns out, they call it the rainforest for a reason. Bakumihan, Bakumihan. I know this place like the Bakumihan. Jack drum shirt on and he stomp all around. The captain no telling me when go aground. Please, Lord, please, I'm afraid of the dark. If we crash, I know there a shark. Go oh, Bakumihan, Bakumihan. I know this place like the Bakumihan. Captain, captain, wake up the man. I see something that don't look like land. A contraband boat running at night. The crazy fool, he don't got no night. Back on me hand, back on me hand. Know this place like the back on me hand. A small crescent of beach masked by an umbrella of jungle thicket. An 18-room lodge with accommodations for just 38 guests. Tropic Star Lodge is intimate, yet you can stretch your legs out into infinity. Beyond this cozy crescent of Panamanian shoreline are vistas of Jurassic proportions. Welcome to Tropic Star Lodge. And yes, we have Marlin. Before chasing Marlin, a quick review of the checklist. Simrad's handheld VHF radio has integrated GPS, crisp audio, and features like plotting and navigation modes. Rough and rugged on the outside, soft and insulated on the inside. The Yeti hopper is portable and leak-proof and comes in four sizes. Penn's International and Slammer 3 reels provide stability and a robust drag system to handle long battles with billfish. The next level technology behind Spiderwire's fluorocarbon, superline, and monofilament means less breakoffs. Costa sunglasses have heavy duty polarized lenses for optimal clarity during those long days in the sun. King Sailfish release mounts will create a custom fiberglass replica of your storybook catch accurate down to the finest detail. Tropic Star's long dock leads to the legendary single screw Bertram 31s. From there, it is a 14 mile run to Zangre Reef. It's also the rainy season in Panama, so there is a lot of green and yellow on the forecast. Step one, live bait. Specifically Bonita, caught using tiny spoons and feathers. The main way we catch our marlin here is live baits. Our guys are absolute magicians with live baits. Very, very good. Blue marlin dive to depths of 5,000 feet to feed on squid, but they prefer the warm surface waters where tuna and bonita school up. Our fishing efforts are aided by a unique bait pod. We had a school of bait there that didn't disappear for 96 hours. The porpoise were in it, the birds were in it, there were sailfish, there were marlin. I personally have no idea why it was there. The current was moving, 
and they weren't moving with the current. They were just staying in one spot and we would get out there every morning and be shocked that they were still there, catch some live baits, put them in, and generally it didn't take longer than 30 minutes to have a selfish or blue marlin, which is absolutely incredible. Pacific Sailfish, proud member of the Billfish Grand Slam, as is the blue marlin. Killer acrobatics, extended by a dorsal as dramatically shaped as the flying jib on a pirate ship. This highly migratory species probably traveled thousands of miles before hitting our teaser. Blues make an appearance too, and Tropic Star's conservation efforts might be why your kids catch one here someday. Even with the rain and diesel engines screaming bloody murder, I catch a quick nap in my cubicle. 20 minutes later, the captain calls from the cockpit. We're open for business, and business hours are now to whenever the hell we want. Going up a bit of a sweat there, buddy. I thought I saw you sweating before you even set the hook. This is what we live for. This is what it's all about. It's a wet Tied into a little blue. Beautiful eat. Richard straps on the fighting belt. He gets a chance at the rod and puts his title of fishing director to work. We got it! While hooking a 200 pound blue, the engine grinds and grumbles as the boat backs down to retrieve line. Oh, I love you, man. <laughs> Very, very nice blue mileage. We have a beautiful first run. The bike was absolutely insane. Right up on the back of the transom, head right out the water. Beautiful. She's putting on a great display. Now she's gone down, and she's making me work for it. This fish hates you, Richard. A lot. Like, really, really, really hates you. <laughs> Not a happy fish. Someone didn't tip her last night. What I love about Tropic Star Lodge is you never know what you're gonna catch, but generally it's big. And you had five strikes in three hours. If you think you see something, you did. Tropic Star has been at the forefront of billfish conservation for decades. It was an early adopter of circle hooks to minimize mortality rates and helped establish a 20-mile non-commercial fishing zone around Penis Bay. Richard hopes that if he leaves any legacy, it's his catch and release efforts. We have always been very, very passionate about it. We're a family-run lodge by fishermen for fishermen. We all want our kids and our grandkids to be able to catch the fish that we get to catch. Yeah. I heard these stories about the good old days. Well, I don't want the good old days to be the same for my kids with I tell them about all these giant fish and they don't get to catch them. So my whole thing is catch and release, it's about respect. Respect the ocean, respect the fish that we're catching, and have respect for the future generations. Side of 
especially when you get to sit here and have a beer and watch someone who's always wanted to catch one and be like, oh, I got it. <laughs> what do I do now? What do I do? <laughs> I've heard from a lot of tarpon fishermen you got to buy it to the Silver King. Come fight one of Her Majesty our mom, and I promise you she'll bring you to your knees. After hours of tug of war, we land a few blues, including this 500 pounder. That won't break any records in Pinas Bay. Pacific blues can be much larger. Compare that to the Caribbean, where a 300 pound Atlantic might earn you a statue in the town square. Hold on, quick explainer. When you catch your first blue, they push you off the dock. Come on, just because when you're a fishing show host doesn't mean you've caught everything that swims. Anyway, please continue. We have one last morning to take in Tropic Star Lodge. <laughs> Back home, everyone's at work, slaving away, sprinting through the rat race. Meanwhile, we are lucky enough to be here at the fringe of Panama's Darien jungle. It's the last day, the last chance. We're back on the transom, the Bertram chugging diesel. Without the aid of electronics, the captain searches for fish, eyeballing weed lines along the drop-off. You see, he's fishing. The rest of us are reeling and taking pictures. I got it. He's up, he's up, he's up. Yep, got you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> How much fun is it with that bright on that spinning tackle? I feel like I should bow to the king like Graham Morton. As our trip ends, many others begin. Tropic Star is officially open. Packed pangas arrive at the dock, marking the lodge's 54th season. Among the new arrivals is artist and frequent guest Al Sprague. Born and raised in Panama, he's been painting the local fishing community as long as Tropic Star has been in business. I got kicked out of art when I was in high school. Got a bachelor's and a master's came and taught for four years, then came back to Balboa High School and taught in the same classroom that I was kicked out of. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my stuff is the ocean. Seascapes, it's too much in me to not want to be around the ocean. He's been to Tropic Star so often, he's written his memories into song. Captain, Captain, too much advice. He says some things that don't sound so nice. Captain, Captain, head for that light. Captain, Captain, the land out of sight. Baco mi han, baco mi han. I know this place like the baco mi han, baco mi han. Outside the window, a dreamlike view of Tropic Star fades into the cloud cover. 
How did they even discover this place a half century ago? It's hard to believe we were even there. Thankfully, we're going home with proof. So are our friends at Marlin Magazine. During our short flight, we finally catch up on where we've been. We daydream on what has just happened. We miss Tropic Star as soon as we take off. Panama City is 40 minutes away. Reality lies in wait, ready to smack us in the face. Think there was a marlin on that stump over there? Not a chance. God, I wish we were back in Tropic Star. It would be nice. Back in my hand, back in my hand. Move this place like the back of my hand. <laughs>